What's happening, what's happening, what's happening? Of course, you know it's your boy, B-Hop Radio, shouting, hey man, as always, I got my podcast partner off in this thing, DJ Toon, what's good with it, boss? Salute, world, what's happening? I'm back in this joint, man. How you doing, brother? Man, feeling good, <laughs> feeling great, Toon. I mean, you know, I've been online just peeking around, you know, I was on Vibe.com earlier today, okay. and uh, they're saying that the Jigga Man, Jay-Z, him and uh, Swiss Beats, or possibly working on a new album that's supposed to be dropping this year, man. Interesting. And that's uh, it's just pleasant to even see that the industry finally understands um, really getting in with one or two, you know, not, not too many producers, you know what I mean? Nas, done, Nas and Hitboy done won with that two times in a row. Yeah. Uh, Jay-Z won with that with the 444 album with no ID. That's right. You know? Um, you know, the world want to see T.I. do that with DJ Toon. You know? uh, it's been everybody, past time for yeah, that. Everybody want to see Snoop go in with Dre for a final time. Yeah. Uh, like, it's, 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 it's really back to that because that, that's what, yeah, if that's true, I would love, I'm looking forward to hearing that, man. You know, of course, it'll be Swiss, but, and it may be a few other producers, but if he let one producer oversee that project, it's mm -hmm. going to win. It's like Drake and 40, you know? Yeah. yeah. Do you feel like, he's going to be able to have anything to talk about on this album. Because, see, my favorite, I hate to say it, one of my favorite uh, Jay-Z albums was that 444. That was the one for me that I was like, you know what, so, I love this album. So guess what? Talk to me. He's going to always have something to speak on because he's putting himself in the lane to where he can talk about everything. He's that rapper now who, who he, I ain't going to call him a rapper. He's that artist who can go in the booth mm -hmm. and spit life. Yeah. And it won't sound corny. Facts. You know what I'm saying? So, so it's funny. See, it's different when you got an artist who rapping about some murders and some killing and a whole list of other <laughs> shit. I'm going to run this down this girl's throat. <laughs> run it down her throat. You know what I mean? All that old wild shit. But then all of a sudden you got this one song on your album where you're trying to, you know, kick some lyrics knowledge. or some yeah. knowledge. Jay been dropping his life story, period. So long as he's alive, he's gonna always have something to rap about because he's comfortable taking his lifestyle to the booth and rapping it out. That's what made 444 so dope because he spoke of, you know, all the experience what him and Beyonce was going through. And you think about some of the albums, you know, when him and Dane was going through his thing, he spoke of uh, the guy he used to hustle with, D Haven. Yeah, D Haven. And uh, what's his, his boy who actually Emory. worked with him now, Emery. Yeah. So, Oh, that's his life. And you can see, like, damn, man, this man really have opened his whole life up to us. So that's why niggas is still Jay-Z fans to this day. That's why he can still fill up arenas two or three, two times in one year because he got something to really say, man. That's what substance, bro. That's what really lasts. So, yeah, he's going to always have something to say. Like, honestly, oh, man, I know some people who are really a fan of Pusha T. Mm. Pusha T can rhyme. He's hard. But man, it's time for him to stop talking about cocaine all the time. We know that you're nowhere uh, near that. Like, Pusha would be even a doper artist. There's yeah. a few artists who... I He's think an he was, artist. Yeah, but but he'll be, but he rap his ass off. Yeah. He got crazy punchlines. Yeah. But I would say Pusha, T, and guys like Rick Ross should really start really talking about a few more... Give, put more substance in their music, and I think their fan base will real be as as high as where Jay Z shit is. Mm. Just like Tip, Ti. Now Tip could he could rap about some street shit, but on every album, and he gonna have it more than one song on the album where he's speaking real life. That's shit. right. You know That's what I mean? Right. With like, you know, with yeah. that situation, so he brings that to the booth. But a lot of these rappers, cats, like I say, Ross, and and the reason why I speak of Ross. And push a T because I love the way they flow. Yeah, they hard. But if they had more subject matter to keep people attention, because after you hear the album, you say, okay, uh, after you hear that they only rapping about the same thing over different beats, yeah. but maybe different <laughs> lyrics, but the yeah. same subject matter, you're only gonna play that album once or twice and you're done with it. Yeah. Because you didn't get anything from it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And those are facts. No, those no are big disrespect, facts. gentlemen. That shit is real. Well, it's got to be something that you can grow with. 
You see yeah. what I'm saying? These albums, like I say, when we talk about a good and mob soul food, yes, you can grow with that album. You got it. We still listening to that album to this day. Boy, come on, the niggas still quote that. Sometimes I don't even know how I'm gonna eat. About come twenty dollars away for being on the street. She you might see a nigga on TV, TV, but it's almost like I'm rhyming for free. That little money, money be gone. gone. God damn it, I'm gone. <laughs> like good and mob brought that shit, boy. I'm with you. And I'm it with stuck you. to your ribs like soul food. It was even a perfect title for the album. Oh, my it God. It stuck to your ribs, baby. Okay, so when we think about people like Jay-Z, mm -hmm. we also got Kendrick Lamar, who's about to drop again, man. Yeah. I mean, after a five-year hiatus, that, right? you see yeah. what I'm saying? Do you think Kendrick is going to be able to come back on top of his game? And how do you think he'll be received when he comes back after this five-year time? Man... I honestly, the same way Drake bet it on Drake, <laughs> mm. I bet on Kendrick Lamar, man, that he's going to hit again because, first of all, he had a chance to take a real break yeah. and experience more things in life. I think he got a new kid and everything. Yeah. So, And he, you know, he's just in five years, he got, I think he have a whole lot of shit to talk about. Mm -hmm. And um, he's still a dope entertainer. You know, Super Bowl, he did his thing, man. That boy yeah. was in a zone. Facts. Thanks. You know, all them, all them, everybody did good. But when you saw Kendrick, you were like younger than a fucking zone. He got, you can tell his mind is somewhere else. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just he's in his own little zone. So, yeah, I can see Kendrick winning all over again, bro. What do you think it is that allows artists to have that staying power in the industry? Because some folks, you know, you got your people like your currencies that have an independent fan base that mm -hmm. ain't going nowhere. Chance Spitter, the Rapper got it. You see what I'm saying? Yes. They got these independent fan bases, so you will <laughs> never come to a point to where it's like, currency ain't hot because he ain't in no industry. He has right. his own he base his that own, he's serving yeah, on a regular basis. Thing. Yes, sir. So, okay. Yeah, currency, so, yeah, currency is like a boutique, man. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, he's his own boutique. You know, when you go in there, you know what you're getting, you know? So which one do you think is better? Because it seems like, okay, Artists that go the major route, when they leave the majors, they're not able to continue to service their audiences like mm -hmm. they were at the majors. But then mm -hmm. you got audience uh, artists like Currency that remain independent that continue Still can to hold serve. His, his fan you see what base. I'm saying? Yeah. Well, that's really on just the 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 just the willpower of that artist, man, and um the the way that they approach their their craft. You know what I mean? It's it's. It's so many answers under that umbrella. Okay. You know, it's, it's a few of them. We can go all, all day, but um, but my thing is, um, it's just certain artists who just think when right when when cats thought Jeezy didn't have nothing to talk about. Mm. Besides, you know, after the BMF, they went to jail and boom, boom. Okay, he rapped about that. No more goes on, no more. Yeah. I forgot the name of that song, but um, you know, he rapped about that. How the feds, whatever, would follow him and whatnot. But when that boy came with that recession album, Facts. he had some subject matter. Yeah. The, su the album had an intro and an outro. You yeah. know, my president's black. Boom. Next thing you know, we got Obama. Come on. That's why that recession album holds so much weight to this day. That's most people's favorite Jeezy album because you can, he walked you through some shit. You know That's what right. I mean? And you even had a chance to know him better. And it was real substance there, bro. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when, when you got the Kendricks, you know, which is, we already know Kend how Kendrick is on, on political issues, mm -hmm. you know, telling how much shock value we might hear. He might call out some motherfuckers on his album that the whole world in love with, but he gonna let you know how he feel about <laughs> Come on. these high ranking people, you know? Yeah. So it ain't no telling. Yeah, Kendrick is, is, is unpredictable. I know it's gonna be dope, but he's, he's just unpredictable. You don't know how he's gonna come. He gonna bring some fly, he gonna bring some fly shit. I think, yeah.